here what I want to sketch is two total product of water curves. So I'll have water holding fertilizer fixed on the horizontal axis. I could just as easily put fertilizer holding water fixed. Corn output on the vertical axis. So these are total product of water curves. We call the first type 1 and the second type 2. Type 1 is concave everywhere and type 2 has an initial convex portion and then it becomes concave. You can ignore the dashed line on the right hand diagram uh, in the beginning. In the left hand diagram I move the curve over a little bit. Now, since I have a total, I want to get average and marginal, just like we practiced many, many times much earlier in the course. So I'll start with type 1, and let's do the marginal. So I need to draw tangent lines, for instance, here, here, and here. Bring those down. Now, the, the 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 units of the the vertical axis on the top are bushels. Here, the units are going to be bushels per gallon. Think about it. The slope has units of rise over run. The rise is bushels, the run is gallons, so rise over run, bushels per gallon. So that's the correct way to label the vertical axis on the second graph. I don't have any numbers here, but it's clear that that these slope, this slope is a lot flatter than this one. Oops, that happened. And, uh, uh, and this is the steepest. So the marginal starts by being pretty big, and then it gets smaller, and then it gets even smaller. So that's approximately the sketch of the marginal product of water curve. I have no idea whether it's convex or concave. I drew it convex, but I, I don't know th what its convexity is. I, but I do know that it's downward sloping. Now let me do the same thing for type 2. Bushels per gallon again. Water holding fertilizer fixed. Now these tangent lines start by getting really steep until at this point, at this point on sketching right now, they're actually quite steep. So the, the tangent line starts out being fairly flat, then it gets steeper, then it gets really steep. But after that point, it gets flatter. This is certainly flatter than it is here, and this is really flat. Now, I don't mean for it to to decrease, let me erase this part over here, because I I want I s still want it to be go always going up. The increasing W is always going to increase uh, Q. So what happens to the marginals now? And I think I can draw that margin a little bit better. Oops. All right, so I'll call this point one, this point two, this point three, this point four, this point five. So between point three and point four, the marginal has gotten flatter. And, and at five, it's really flat. So the shape of the marginal product of water curve 
would be something like that. Next, I want to do the average product of water. And you'll recall that to find the average, you draw a line from the origin to the value of the function at the point. So for example, here, here, here. So here you can see that these are clearly getting flatter and flatter, so the average is going to be falling. It's a little hard to compare the average to the marginal at point at point one. But at point two and at point three, you can see that the orange line is steeper than the corresponding red line. For example, here, here you can see at that point that the orange line is steeper than the blue line. That means that the average is less than the marginal. So at point two, the average is less than the marginal. Similarly, over here, the orange line is steeper than the blue line, so the average is going to be bigger than the marginal. Sorry, I drew it the wrong way before. Okay, so back to point two. At point two, in the upper graph, I said that the orange line was steeper than the blue line. So that means that the marginal has to be bigger. I mean, <laughs> that means that the average has to be bigger. Sorry about this. So the orange line represents the average, and the average is steeper than the marginal. So in the bottom diagram, the dot for the average has got to be above the dot for the marginal. Now let's do it for point three. The, the average line is represented by the slope of the orange. The marginal is represented by the slope of the blue. The average is steeper than the marginal. The average line is steeper than the marginal line, so the average is going to have to be bigger than the marginal. So on point number three, the average is going to have to be bigger than the marginal. When you compare the average at two, I'll change that. When you compare the average at two to the average at three, the average at three is going to be below the average at two, because in this upper graph, it's flatter. The average at two is here, so the average at three has to be below the average of 2, and it has to be bigger than the mar this is the marginal at 3. The average at 3 has to be bigger than the marginal at 3. So, so the average at 3 has to be bigger than the marginal at 3. So this would be an appropriate point. The geometry is a little trickier at point one, but if you look carefully, it's still true that the average is going to be bigger than the marginal. And in addition, it's a lot steeper than the average of two or the average of three. So the average product of water has that shape. Now let's lo look at it for type two. Uh, at point one is really hard to see what's going on. Even at point two, the line for the the average is like that. It's it's really flat. Look at it at point three. It's average at two. Average at three is getting steeper. So average at two is bigger than average at three. But compared to the blue lines, here's the marginal at 2, here's the marginal at 3. Compare A2 and A3, the A2 and M2, M2 is bigger. Compare A3 and M3, M3 is bigger. By bigger I mean steeper. So the average at 2 is going to be less than the marginal at 2, and the average at 3 is going to be less than the marginal at 3. When you compare average at 2 and average at 3, average at 3 is bigger. 
So the average of 2 is here, then the average of 3 is going to be bigger. But it's still less than the marginal of 3. Now let's look what happens at point 4. Point 4 is really interesting. At point 4, there's the function. And so a line drawn from the origin to the function is exactly the same as the blue line. So average and marginal are going to equal at point 4. This is a4. This is m4. Those have the same slopes. So average of 4 is going to be the same as marginal of 4. The lines are going to join right there. At point 5, marginal at 5 is represented by this line. Average at 5 by this line here. Let me sketch it. Now, now it's marginal that's really low. Average has gone down from A4. Okay, so if this is A4, average has gone down from A4, but marginal has really collapsed. A average is a lot bigger than marginal. So average is going to be bigger than marginal, so the average is going to be some point like this. We will be talking about these shapes quite a lot. And so in the future, when I have type 1 and I want to draw average and marginal, uh, we know that they're both downward sloping and the marginal product of water is going to be below the average product of water. So that's for type 1 bushels per gallon. For type 2, the generic shape is as follows. They both have an upside down U shape. The marginal product of water looks like this, and the average product of water like this. And at the where average reaches its maximum, average and marginal are equal. We'll talk about that a bit more in the next lesson. Uh, for now, just draw the average product of water. That's what that's what it'll look like for type two. By the way, there are examples of this that worked out previously in some of the class handouts.